and such a crazy thing. You see, and I said, you're crazy to do such a thing like that. Don't do that. I saved a squirrel. He said, oh, get me yourself, preacher. Come on, let's go. I got my rifle. We traveled oh, almost till noon time. They didn't see a truck. And it was a moonlight too, you know. And they'll feed at night time and they'll get under the brush. And anything else, they'll hide through the daytime and they'll almost starve themselves to death because they've been shot at. And so we didn't even see a truck. It was almost noon. And so Bert went down. A little drift of snow where the winds had drifted to right by the some bushes. There's an opening about twice the size of this building. And so Bert sat down there and he reached back in like this. I thought he was going to get his thermos jug and get a drink of hot chocolate. We'd eat a sandwich and then separate. We'd go on one way over Jefferson Notch or some way. I'd come back down by Washington, usually somewhere that way, and we could meet in 9 or 10 o'clock to the base camp. If we got any deer, we'd hang it up the next day, we'd get a horse or something, go after it. So then, I thought we was fixing to separate right there, because we was getting up pretty high. <clears throat> and there's no, not such, much above timber in there. So he sat down and reached back like this, and he brought out a little whistle, and I said, oh, bird. Don't do that. See them lizard looking eyes up at me and just grinned like a, I don't know what. What put that little whistle in his mouth and he blew it and it sounded just like a little phone, you know. How he kind of like buggles for his mama. And when he did that, just across that opening, a great big door stood up and a door is another dear. You see, stood up. I could see those big brown eyes looking around and them great big picked ears.